MTV's The Challenge is a perfect television show, let's be honest, it's perfect. But also, let's be honest, The Challenge, it could use some fixing up. You know, the ratings, they're low, they have been for a while now, and we've had three seasons in a row that haven't lived up to the hype and have faltered for one reason, another, or 12. Now, simultaneous to the main seasons of The Challenge, suffering this drop-off has been the emergence of and fan adoration for The Challenge All-Stars, born out of the We Want OGs movement, God bless you, Godfather Mark Long. And now on to its second season, All Stars has seized the love of the fans and provided something much more resembling the show that we grew up loving over so many years and so many seasons. The fan allegiance has sided so heavily with All Stars and been so loud about the love for one and the distaste for the other that it seems that the powers that be at Paramount have taken notice. Not only did the launch of the entire Paramount Plus streaming service be on the back of All-Stars 1 marketing, but now they've gone ahead and decided that ratings and opinions of Spies, Lies, and Allies are so bad that they're going to overlap All-Stars 2 with the end of SLNA instead of just waiting and running them back-to-back -to, -back to own the calendar the way they did with Double Agents and All-Stars 1. Going even further, they're already filming All-Stars 3, and there's word that we may see up to three seasons or more of All-Stars before we ever see a 38th season of the regular show. Now, to me, this is some insanity. Are we just going to let the regular show die out? Is All-Stars really going to just replace it entirely? I say no. I think that would be a pretty big overreaction this quick, but the question at least has to be asked because the way the winds are blowing right now, it kind of seems like that may be where we're headed. And with all that being said, maybe, maybe it's just, it's already time for the regular show to start looking a little more like All-Stars. If it's going to stick around, maybe it looks a little more like it. Maybe you pull a few of those advantages that have been born out of All-Stars back into the regular show. Now, what would those advantages be, you ask? What changes, dare I say, fixes need to be made to the regular seasons? Well, huh, I am so glad you asked because obviously at this point in the video, you assume I'm doing all this to tell you my opinions. And I am. So here they are. Three easy to incorporate changes to get the main show back on track. First off, ditch the theme. Get back to a basic premise. The last three seasons have been marred by a shockingly deep dedication to their themes. With Total Madness, everything revolved around driving these poor people crazy. And the theme was pushed into as many daily challenges, eliminations, confessionals as possible. And it was one of those ideas, you know, it sounds cool the first time you hear it, the banner image for the season, it looks cool, but then you realize 18 straight episodes of no one having fun and people's mentals being tortured doesn't make for very good television. Then came the double agents and spies, lies, and allies, double feature of spies, assassins, killer agent theme, bunch of 007s everywhere you look. And everywhere you look, a fake gem. People being infiltrated, TJ's a handler now, an insane amount of unnecessary pyro, and absurd lingo on top of absurd lingo, and that's just not what we come to the challenge for. Let's get back to rivals. No theme, just a one-word explanation for the season where the teams were rivals. Let's get back to exes. No theme, just a one-word explanation for the season where the teams were made up of exes. Let's get back to free agents. No theme, just a two-word name for a season of individual play. That's adjustment one. Now, adjustment number two, simplify the format, please, and thank you. Man, the days of old when TJ would just walk out episode one, borderline minute one, and say, here's the rules. They're not going to change. Let's begin. It was so easy back then, and nowadays it's far from it. Every single week of the last couple seasons, knowing who is on whose team has been like a weekly homework assignment. Ditch the switching, ditch the skull twist, ditch the grenades, ditch the redemption houses. Maybe don't ditch a purge here or there. Those kind of work, and they've been around longer anyways. But tell us what the format is and stick to it. You want one small, eensy little, tiny little bit of twist in the middle of the season somewhere? Fine, great even. But this constant change doesn't do the show any favors the way you felt like it originally would. What started as an evolution is in fact just decay. Finally, adjustment number three, lean on the vets and be really, really particular about what rookies you cast. Yes, you've got to continue to bring new characters into the fold. Otherwise, you're just doing all-star seasons. And if you want the show to go on forever, you need to always be building new generations of players as older ones phase out. That change is necessary. We know that. But you shouldn't have to cast 19 rookies to find the couple that pop. And if you're going to do a season with half the cast or more being rookies... Take note from the original Fresh Meat seasons that not only did it first, but did it successfully. And make sure you've got really solid vets with obvious and interesting storylines to carry the season. 
Fresh Meat 2, for instance, an amazing all-time season, personally, maybe my favorite ever. And it did was one that featured a lot of rookies and a lot of debuts of the Cara Marias, the Laurels, the Teresas, the Brandons of the world, all fun, interesting rookies that would go on for have memorable challenge careers. But that season didn't matter who the rookies were. It was always going to work regardless because it hinged on the Kenny versus Wes and Evelyn dynamic, which was grade A content and was then buoyed by the presence of a Jen, of a Ryan, of a Paula, of a Landon, great vets who each had their own individual fan bases, who each brought humor to the show who were each good to great players in their own right and could carry an episode, a storyline, if need be. So bring in fewer rookies and only the best of the best. Everyone out there wants to be on this show. You can pick from the best of the best. And then meanwhile, give us as many vets that we love that you can and make sure each group of vets has the mix of storylines coming in that's going to carry a season. So to recap, if you do those three things, if you ditch the theme, you simplify the format, and you go heavier and more specific on casting vets, I think you can turn this whole ship back around towards being the greatest competition show the world has ever seen once again. And of course, I wouldn't just make all these suggestions without having a surefire hit of a season idea ready to pitch to you, would I? Of course not. You clicked on this video. You saw the name of it. I've got a pitch I've just been dying to share, and we finally made it to the part of the video where I'm going to share it. Soapbox preaching is done. Boardroom pitch meeting begins. Buna Murray, if you're listening, and I hope you are, I've got you 100% covered. So if you don't have your notepads out yet, grab them now, because I'm about to hit you with what would easily be the greatest season in challenge history. Or at least the greatest season of the challenge possible in 2021 because some other changes to the show over the years can never, will never, and to some degree should never be changed back. But that's a video for another day. I digress. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. So here we go. I present to you the challenge generations. Imagine it's summer 2022. We are fresh off viewing All-Stars 2 and 3 back to back. And boy, were they awesome. Tyler, Jody, Jordan, Jemmy have joined Yes as All-Stars champions. No, I don't know if they win. I don't know if they'll do dual winners, but I like to think so, so that everyone not named Jordan at least has a chance. Fans are ecstatic. Just give us more all-stars, they say. No need for season 38. Let the regular show die. We've got all we need with these OGs, but then something changes. A trailer drops. A trailer for the 38th official season of The Challenge, called simply Generations. A blending of the regular show and the all-stars spinoff we've come to love. The best of both worlds rolled up into one. The possibility for the greatest season of all time. Is Mark Long here? Oh, you bet your ass the Godfather is here. Well, what about Bananas? Is he here? Of course. How could we do a season without the GOAT? Hey, I think CT's the GOAT. Don't worry. He's here too. Well, what about my favorite females? Is Kara here? Is Tori here? Is Tina here? Did you get Rachel? Is Rachel back? Got them fucking all. It's the challenge. Generations, and it works like this. It's a celebration, a face-off of all the many great eras of the challenge to see which is the best of the best. The location, Thailand, baby. We wouldn't think of doing it anywhere else. I'm talking beachfront, infinity pool, basketball court. That's a very important part of this. And a lot, big, open house for good parties, good hideaway hookups. Now the format, nine teams of four, battle of the season style. Two men, two women per team. Teams compete in a daily challenge. Last place, you're losers. You're going straight to the elimination. First place, you're winners. You're safe, and you get to pick the other team to go into elimination as well. At that elimination, those two teams each pick a male-female pair to represent them. The winners stay in the game. The losers, you're going home, and if that means your team goes from four to two, so be it, just like battle of the seasons. 12 episodes long, which is the perfect amount, 12 of the 36 challengers will be left standing for the finals, be be it three teams of four, six teams of two, I don't care, 12 people will be left at the end, $1 million, of course, up for grabs, winners, $750,000, second place, $200,000, third place, a respectable 50k, and everyone else, you get nothing. Now, this is what we really came for, right? Who are, who are those nine teams of four made up from, do you ask? Well, they each represent the best of their generation of the show. Those that could at one time or another have said or been called the face of the franchise. These players dominated a period of the challenge, not just by winning finals, though they did plenty of that too, but by being and bringing the grade A amazing entertainment and content that we've come to know, love, and expect from this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful show. 
want to know who makes the cut? I thought so. Let's go through them. Now, I'm a smart enough casting director to know that if you set out with 36 names in mind, you're not going to be able to get 36 yes answers or schedules to line up. You know how it works. So for each team, I've got the four hopeful players that would be the best case scenario, as well as one or two alternates in case someone couldn't come. And these alternates, they'd be fantastic and fit the bill if need be. So without further ado, let's talk generations, eras of the challenge, and go through all nine teams of who would be on this amazing, wonderful, absolutely the greatest of all time season of the challenge. Team number one, simply called the OGs. We've got to start where the show started. We've got to go all the way back as we go through these nine teams. We will be doing so in order of when they debuted on the show, the ge earliest generations to the newest generations. And the OG team simply called the OGs because they were very well the first ever. Do it, they put the show on the map. They were the ones that created the show in the first place. And who are those four folks, you may ask? Well, let me tell you, we have to start, of course, course, with the godfather himself. Mark Long debuted on season two, four finals, two titles to his name. He has absolutely have to be here. He is one of the most essential members of this entire cast. Without him, a lot of this falls apart. He is joined by Veronica Portillo, debuted on season three, four finals, three titles, iconic figure. Veronica is there, joined by maybe our biggest get as a casting director, Rachel Robinson, back, one of the most dominant females to ever play the game, most dominant people to ever play the game. Season six, Val the sexes she debuted three finals two titles to her name one of the most dominating finals victories we've ever seen back on the duel two Darrell the original goat the four by four champion Darrell Taylor season seven the gauntlet made his debut he rounds out the OG's team Mark Long Veronica Rachel Darrell and just in case those four who share 15 finals and 11 championships between them in case one of them isn't able to make the trip isn't wanting to make the trip may Maybe gets hurt early on. Some reason, some way, they aren't able to be on the OG's team. We've got Susie and Cyrus waiting in the wings, ready to jump in. Also, All-Stars legends in their own right easily could join this OG's team in a pinch. That is team number one. Our second team then is simply called the Inferno era. These folks debuted in the late single digits, early double digit seasons of the show and dominated that run where it was Inferno and Gauntlet mostly alternating every other season back just before the days of a TJ Lavin, if you will. But many of these folks went on to have super duper long runs on the show and even are still in our lives right now. That would be Anissa. You can't do a season without Anissa. Of course, she is one of our longest loving OG challenge legends. We've got debuted back on season six, Battle of the Sexes, two, two finals to her name. She is joined by Tina Barta, who has just come back into our lives on All Stars 2 and is just as iconic and amazing at television as she was back then, from Punch and Beth to all the other amazing things she, she has done over her career. Tina's got to be there. She's got two finals. She debuted on season seven. Derek Kosinski is here, as is Chris Tamburillo, CT. Derek and CT. Derek debuted season nine. CT season eight, The Inferno. CT, of course, nine finals, four titles. Derek, five finals, three titles. This entire team, 18 finals and seven championships between them. CT may be the greatest reality character of all time. Derek, CT, Tina, and Anissa, really the four of them back when it was The Inferno and it was badasses versus good guys. I can't think of four people that deserve the badass title more than these four. Maybe instead of Inferno era, they should just be referred to as the badasses. And just in case one of these four can't make it, we've got Brad and Jody debuting on season nine and 10, respectively, waiting. Also, memorable faces, iconic characters from this same era of the show. They could easily jump in if CT, you know, he's a big movie star these days. Maybe he's got to film something. Maybe Anissa or Derek are just out. They're like, we're in the podcast game now. We talk about the show. We don't actually do it. Brad and Jody are waiting there. So you got Anissa, Tina, Derek, and CT, Brad and Jody happily waiting to get their opportunity. That is the Inferno era, team number two. Our third team, our most decorated team by kind of a wide margin is the dual era. This is, think, the teams of the show. The dual season 13, dual two season 17. That era, although all of them would go on to have extensive careers even beyond that, that was when these four folks were dominating this. They were really the first, as much as we can look back on the OGs in the Inferno era folks and say they were faces of the franchise. This became around the time when the challenge itself was a full-blown 
Stone franchise that we knew was never ending. And these folks were a part of those first ever kind of faces of the franchise that were going to carry the show into all kinds of new places. They are number one, Wes Bergman. Of course, Wes is here. Debuted season 12, Fresh Meat, five finals, two titles on his resume. He is joined by Evelyn Smith. One of arguably the best to have ever played the game. Evelyn coming back. Season 12 Fresh Meat debut as well. Four finals, three titles to her name. Then we've got two Key West members. The most decorated original show in the history. Real World Key West. Two of them come back as a part of the Duel era. Both of whom made their debuts on Season 13 The Duel. That would be Paula Paula Walnuts, Paula Moronic back with us. Five finals, two titles to her names. The best rivals player ever. Two-time rivals champion Paula and then of course the goat himself the most decorated champion of all the champions Johnny Bananas is here he also debuted season 13 nine finals seven titles you know the resume between this group 23 titles four 23 finals excuse me 23 titles that'd be a lot 23 finals 14 titles and just in case one of them doesn't want to come maybe Wes and Johnny are like we're friends now but we don't want to be teammates maybe Paula's like I'm good uh I've moved way past that show I ain't going back into that kind of crazy atmosphere maybe Maybe Evelyn, who I believe is out there being a lawyer or something crazy. Maybe they don't want to be here. Well, guess what? We've got two-time champion Tyler Duckworth just eager to join his other real-world Key West castmates. We could just make this an entire Key West team if we really wanted to. But we've also got Jen with two ends. Jen Grijalva coming back. She was season 14. Tyler was season 13 debuts. They also, this dual era, were faces of the franchise. So Wes, Evelyn, Paula, Johnny Bananas. Tyler and Jen waiting, eagerly willing to be alternates if need be. That is your dual era, team number three. Then we have our fourth team, and arguably the team that represents maybe the the most popular version of the challenge there has ever been. That would be the Rivals era. Think the 20s. We've now, you know, we're adults. The challenge is drinking some beers. The challenge is renting some cars. The challenge is becoming an adult. The Rivals area, the 20s, the season 20 to 25 range. These folks made their debut and left their marks over the course of this dozen or so seasons of the show. They are made up by, first and foremost, Cara Maria. Season 19, Fresh Meat 2, debuted nine finals, two titles to her name. Joining her, one of the other women in the argument for female goat of the entire show, that would be Laurel Stuckey, also made her debut season 19. Those two eventually would be teammates, so now they're coming back being teammates again. We got Cara with her nine finals, two titles. Laurel with her four finals, one title. They are joined by Zach. Zach Nichols coming in, season 23, Battle of the Seasons, debuted and won one that was his one title he has four finals and then Jordan wisely debuted season 24 rivals two and took the challenge house by storm made a huge name for himself that season the subsequent season of free agents four finals three titles for Jordan 21 finals and seven titles on this team and just in case someone here doesn't want to be a part of the challenge generations well don't worry we have two of the biggest fan favorites of all time waiting as alternate and it's that would be Leroy and Nani. Yes, did Leroy retire from the show? Absolutely. But there's always circumstances to get someone back. Maybe the show makes some of the changes he recently advocated for. If you haven't seen his recent video on Instagram, go over to Roy Lee the Barber on IG and hit that up. But maybe some changes are made and all of his best friends are there and he comes back if need be. But otherwise, we got Cara, we got Laura, we got Zach, we got Jordan, we got maybe arguably on the competitive side, the odds on favorite to win this whole dang thing. That is the rival's era. Then at this point, the challenge kind of started taking a big, big turn. No longer did they have the guaranteed feeder system of real world and road rules. So things were on the precipice of starting to really change as far as where this cast came from. And that is why team number five, I like to call late period real world, the last gasps of the real world franchise pumping out some all-star characters into our lives. We've got four members of this team that between them have seven finals, but zero titles. So they're really fighting for something here. That would be started with Corey War and Corey arguably the the face of the faces of the franchise in the last you know five six years 
of this show. Corey's back. He debuted season 27. Bloodlines joining him on that season, also debuting, and now joining him on his late period real world cast team is Tony Reigns. Tony time. It's that time again. We've got to bring my guy Tony back into the fold. He's got one finals on Vendetta. He debuted on season 27 Bloodlines and he was such a wonderful presence on the challenge screen while we had him. We bring him back in and along with Corey and Tony, they are joined by Nicole Zanata. Nicole season 29 invasion, one final to her name, as well as Kayla Casillas season 29 invasion also debuted so these folks all debuted, you know, they were on the last couple of seasons the real world ever put out, at least that version of the real world ever put out, and they joined the challenge in those late stages of the 20s, entering the 30s. They've all got finals, no titles, and unfortunately, this is the only team where we can say, we need these four people to show up because there are no alternates. The only one even possible is you might be wondering where is Ashley Millionaire Meltdown Mitchell two-time champion? Well, we don't know if she's ever going to be on the show again. We don't know if she is allowed or should be because we don't know why she got sent home on the last season. That's not for us to know. We know she broke a rule and did something probably not very good and very likely has joined the ranks of those who will not be gracing the screens ever again in the challenge world. But depending whatever comes out of that situation still we since we still don't really totally know maybe a millionaire mitchell brings a couple titles to this late period real world team but without her it's Corey, tony nicole and kayla this is one of the most fun the most chaotic teams we can put back into the game and also one of the most desperate to get a win and prove themselves as a generation of the show that is team five late period real world our sixth generation of the show then in our sixth team is simply the are you the one team when real world stopped bringing wonderful people into our lives into the challenge stopped being that feeder system mtv at first buna murray at first turned to one show above all others to be the new feeder system road rules was long gone real world was recent gone and so they turned to are you the one and boy did they have some success in the early days of pulling people in this was the first time traditional old school long-term challenge fans were like what is going on how can you get rid of the real world how can you bring anyone from any other show what are all these people doing we kind of resisted these folks at first but soon enough they won our hearts they won our minds and i am of course talking about the fearsome foursome that makes up the are you the one team team number six that starts with nelly t nelson thomas he came in on season 28 rivals three he has made one finals he is joined by devin walker season 28 rivals three as well also one finals on that original season of rivals three then we've got tori deal season 30 dirty 30 debut two finals to her name and cam williams killer cam elimination queen the killer cam is back season 31 vendetta's three finals to her name between them seven finals also zero titles so they are as desperate as the previous team to prove themselves to earn those victories but this team originally we were like get them away from us we don't what what's this change what's this new show and then eventually we're like man there's some of the best television we've got going and just in case any of them don't want to come back or can't come back or you know with three of these people at the time of recording they very well could become champions on spies lies and allies it's still in the card so maybe they get their money and they go home so then we've got amanda and hunter both having debuted on season 28 and 29 respectively for amanda and hunter they are dying to be a part of this team they come from that are you the one world as well and shout out are you the one three yes tori and cam season four and or five and four respectively but nelson devin amanda hunter among others are you the one three one of the greatest single seasons to provide us challenge competitors for years to come that is your team of are you the one team number six Next up is the UK team. As the show began a new generation, post Dirty 30, we've entered Vendetta's final reckoning, War of the Worlds. And in this era, we eventually would go fully, fully global with the show. But before we went fully global, we roped in our old pals over in the UK and started 
creating our very own feeder system from the MTV, you know, UK universe and many wonderful people came into the franchise and become faces of that franchise through that new system in those new shows that we were developing from and chief among them has to be the first mentioned of this cast is Kyle Christie arguably the I mean I think he's currently has the longest run of successful seasons in a row meaning it in a row, not winning all of them. He makes finals. He doesn't quite get the wins. We'll see if that changes, but debuted on season 31 vendettas as did his teammate in this season on team UK. And that is Rogan O'Connor. Please. If you listen to anything, this whole video, get Rogan back on this show. We need Rogan content on this show. He also debuted on vendettas famously flamed out. He only was about in about 20 minutes of the first episode came back more famously made a final and got a victory on war of the world. Two, he is joined by Jenny West, one of the most dominant players we've ever seen enter the game and just assert her will immediately. Yes, did she lose in a brutal hall brawl the first season she was ever on War of the Worlds 2, season 35? Yes, that happened, but she came right back and won in dominating fashion on Total Madness, got that victory. She is joined, as is Rogan and Kyle, by one of the all-time greatest human beings to ever walk this earth, one of the all-time greatest people ever in the history of the challenge. That is Tula Big T, season 35, War of the Worlds 2. She's become a staple ever since. Yes, did she just announce that she was retiring from this show? Quite possibly that happened. But just in case she wants to do one more rodeo with the challenge, maybe we get Big T to join Jenny, Rogan, and Kyle. Five finals, two titles between them. But if Big T is officially retired, retired, if for some reason Rogan out there is doing too many boxing matches or Kyle's a new dad he doesn't want to be there we've got alternates for these folks and that would be Theo and Georgia both debuted on season 34 War of the Worlds where they made a final they made a name for themselves and they both need to be back on our screens we need Theo and we need Georgia they were wonderful content wonderful competitors so you've got Theo and Georgia as alternates you've got Big T Jenny Rogan and Kyle in the fold as Team UK Our eighth team might very well be the one that you dislike the most, but they've got to be here because they have dominated the last two or three seasons of the show and the storylines. That is, of course, Team Big Brother, Josh, Fessy, Casey, and Amber, the four of them coming together like they've tried to do um, pretty unsuccessfully on the recent couple of seasons, but love them or hate them, they have been faces of the show. The Big Brother Alliance has been a main storyline, so... If they've tried to compete together before, we will now give them the chance to compete together. Now, five finals, one title between them. If, by any means, one of them doesn't want to come back, maybe we throw a Devon in. Devon, bring Devon back into the show. She was one of the best people to do television that reality ch- television has ever seen. Bring Devon back, if need be, if Amber or Casey won't show up. But Josh, Fessy, Casey, Amber, alternate Devon, big brother, love it or hate it, they've got to be a team in the challenge generations. And finally, our ninth and final team, simply the new kids. Now, are these people faces of the franchise? No, not yet, but yet is the key word. They very well could be. We've got to develop some new folks. This season's going to be a non-rookie season, but we've got to have some new faces that are relatively brand new to the game that all have a season under their belt and did something, made a mark, did something to let us know that, hey, We are those stars of the future you've been looking for. So we bring them back and we give them a chance to prove it versus the best of the former generations. These new kids are made up of Natalie Anderson, season 37 double agents cut short by a medical related disqualification. She's got to come back. She was uh, she was off to an amazing start on that season and I think could be an unbelievable challenge competitor for years to come. Then we've got Kells, Kaliche Dyke, Kells coming back. Season 38, Spies, Lies, and Allies debut as the next two folks have been. Kells made a big mark in a very, very short amount of time on that season and was one of the ones fans and myself alike were the hype, most hype to see brought into the show. Bring him back, joining him, Corey Lay and Priscilla 
Corey, Priscilla, both as same, similar to Kells. Just on this recent season, the Spies, Lies, and Allies. Were they there super long? No. But did they make a name? Did they make an impact? Did they spark our curiosity and desire to see them more in the future? 100%. So we've got Priscilla. We've got Corey. We've got Kells. We've got Natalie. We've got an absolutely fire squad of new kids, team number nine. And if you think one of them maybe didn't enjoy their one experience on the challenge. Maybe the other actual casting directors out there, like nah, some other people popped just a little bit more. Maybe we bring in the alternates, Ed and Michaela, also debuting on season 38. I'll take them in the fold as well. So whether it's Priscilla, Corey, Kells, Natalie, you want to throw an Ed or a Michaela. Hell, you want to throw in a Manuel or an Emmy. I'm down for any of it, but we bring back four of the most recent rookies that gave us something great, even in limited amount of time we let them prove they are in fact the next generation of this show so there you have it nine teams nine generations of the challenge represented all battling for the title of the best of the best many of the best to ever play the game many of the best to have ever graced our television screens all faces of the franchise at one time or another all the generations represented one final thing though that i did forget you know, I mentioned back that uh, maybe one little twist would be okay. Maybe a purge type of situation is fine. TJ's got to have his fun after all. Just because we ain't changing things up every single week doesn't mean we can't have one little tiny well-executed time that we add a twist in that could possibly lead to an iconic moment somewhere in the middle of our season, which leads me to the fact that there will be one such twist, and it will involve uh, four more generational players coming back into the game and doing so by way of acting as mercenaries. Mercenaries have been one of the, the best twists we've ever added to the show. They almost work every single time. So we are going to have two pairs of mercenaries, both to face off in the same elimination arena and provide a possible double elimination and a big boost, a big flare in the middle of the season. Those two pairs of mercenaries are as follows. We've got our new school mercenaries, and we've got our old school mercenaries. The new school mercenaries are none other than Polly and Ninja, Natalie, former teammates, coming back in as mercenary teammates. Polly and Ninja both had very impactful runs, albeit short two to three season runs more recently on the show, both of which I would love to see back into the game. You could add Polly to the Big Brother team up top if you wanted. You could add Ninja Natalie to the New Kids team. Either way, I want them back, and they are coming back as mercenaries and a tough mercenary team to beat. And then my greatest achievement as casting director. Many of these fine folks that we've talked about, I would love to hang my hat and say, hey, I got Rachel to come back. Hey, we got Bananas and Wes on the same team. Hey, this person came out of retirement. But none of it will compare to the moment, the best moment potentially in a long, long time in challenge history and certainly potentially of this very much season is when the old school mercenaries walk into that elimination layer arena, whatever we're calling it here. And that is because you might have noticed back when we talked about the OGs and the Inferno era team that you, there was two glaring people left out of that. I can almost guarantee a true challenge fan heard those lists and was like, this is good, but I know one male and one female who are obviously missing. And that's because guess what? They're super duper busy. They're really hard to get, but they did agree to come back for a one-off appearance as mercenaries and as partners. None other than Coral and The Miz. Coral and and The Miz, maybe two of the most iconic names in challenge and reality television history. Oh my God. Will I take responsibility for the thousands of challenge fans around the world whose hearts actually stop when freaking Coral and The Miz walk into the Elimination Arena together? No, because mine will have stopped right along with them because just imagine how fucking insane that would be. Oh my God, I'm just so excited. I want to see those two coming back in. I want to see this whole thing. So there you have it, the challenge generation, all the potential for the greatest season in challenge history. It's the main show we love with a heavy dash of that all-stars we've come to enjoy the most. No convoluted theme, just a name that tells you what it is, a simple format with only one small twist that allows for that surefire epic moment, and a cast full of the people who have carried this franchise and made it the amazing show it has been over the years. Now, you've stuck it all out with me to the very end all the way this far, and I want to know your thoughts. 
Would this work? Would it be an amazing season? Or am I giving myself way too much credit here? That happens a lot. So let me know if I am. Who from the cast would be missing? If you like the idea of generations, but you think this should be a team or this person should be on this team, let me know. Comment below. Tell me what I got right, wrong, who I'm missing, who's got to be there, who is essential. And Buna Murray, again, I know you're out there. Please, you've been listening. Take it all. It's yours. No credit needed. Just make this thing happen. Challenge fans around the world are begging to get this ship back on course, and this would do just that. So that is all for this installment of the Challenge Historian. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you don't miss a future video. For more Challenge content, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Challenge Historian and check out our podcast where we recap every single episode that comes out of the Challenge, be it Spies, Lies, and Allies, All-Stars 2, or whatever comes in the future. Search Challenge Historian on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen, and you will find me. I can't thank you enough for being here today. I hope to talk to you again very soon. Until then, peace.